It's all right. <laughs> Your eyes are watering. Oh, yeah. Your eyes are really watering. Okay, you ready for this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Chad, here with Professor Peterson. Mark Peterson. Mark Happy Peterson. to see you. Happy to be here. Glad to have him back. Uh, Professor Peterson, of course, knows a lot about Korean history. 50 years worth. 50 years worth. Yeah. Yeah, not too much. And so I thought it would be fun to do a little spin on Korean history. We're going to talk about a Korean history topic while we are eating fire the, noodles. The, the hottest food in the world. Hottest food in the world, I think. It's the hottest food I've ever had. I've had it before, so I know what I'm in for. I don't know what I'm in for. You're I'm trying worried. to kill me. I, I'm a little stressed about this. I, I hope I, I don't know, I'm gonna get, I might get a lot of hate comments for, for putting me through this. So anytime you want to quit, you quit. Okay, yeah. I'm tough. I don't quit. Okay. I don't quit. All right. Yeah. We're just gonna start top. So <laughs> oh, I'm nervous for this. I, I, I've sworn off this from my channel that I would never do fire noodles again. <laughs> you did one once before? I've, I've done a few, yeah. Oh Different no. Versions. This is the spiciest kind, so. Oh no. And the idea is to talk about something in a coherent way. Yeah. <laughs> while eating spicy noodles. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Should okay. Do it? Let's do it. Monjo Oh, monjo. Oh, monjo. Kachi to Oh boy. Oh, first bite's not so bad. It is for me. I don't, I don't know what first bite you got. Oh, well then, then it ranks up. It, yeah. racks, it racks up after that. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about it just so that I can survive. Um, so I know that Korea and Japan have been in the news a lot lately. And so I know, excuse me, I know a lot about that. The crazy trade wars. Yeah. America and, and China, now yeah. Korea and Japan. Now Korea and Japan. I'm not these things in errors. Hopefully, things will settle down. But yeah. the reason the trade war is so severe, but because there's history. Right. So that's what I want to know about. There's bad history. history. Yeah. Yeah. And I know a little bit of the history. Um, I would say I know a decent amount, but I certainly don't know what you know. And so I kind of want to go back to the first. 1592. 1592. There were some minor things before that. Uh -huh. Even King Sejong, the great mm -hmm. alphabet king, mm -hmm. attacked Tsushima Island to stop the pirates from coming in. So there were some pirates, you know, naval things. Mm -hmm. You're doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay. You're doing okay? Another bite. Yeah. So there were these naval things, but the worst was 1592 uh -huh. when Hideyoshi. Unified Japan, beat a bunch of other warlords, and decided he wanted other worlds to conquer. So where does it go? Korea. Chosun. Actually, China. China. Okay. He didn't give a dang about Korea. Really? No. Chosun, Korea was just on the way to China. Mm-hmm. When he hears about this great country of China out there, and he's the emperor of Japan. He can't be the emperor of one country, but he's the emperor of Japan. Yeah. And he hears about this emperor of China. Oh. You're, you're <laughs> and so he wants to go and conquer China. Yeah. And Korea's in the way. Yeah. So he sends this note to the, the king of Korea. Yeah. He says, Will you lend me an imperial road that we can travel on? Yes. Lend him a road. You know, that'd be like, you know, the Russians saying, We want to be able to move our troops from San Francisco to New York. Would you yeah. uh, give us access to your freeway? You know, no way, Jose. Mm -hmm. So, the Koreans see this as a real threat, and it is. And before long, they land. And the biggest thing about the war on land is. <laughs> you're going for the. Yeah, I can't wait. You're going for the ginger ale. The biggest thing about the war on land is the Japanese have from the Portuguese muskets. Okay. Basically, handheld cannons. These big blunderbusses. Wow. Koreans don't have anything like that. So, on the land, the Japanese just marched through Korea, just slaughtering people, yeah. stealing everything they can get their hands on. On the sea, it's a different story. Eastern Sheen, right. we did the yeah, video, we did on, the video. The, on yeah. the film. Yeah. That was a wonderful film. Great film. And uh, Eastern Sheen is a wonderful guy. He's super, super brilliant naval, naval strategist. Uh -huh. He says, 
Eastern Jean says if we just block them on the sea, we can have a chance to survive. And, and Eastern Jean did that. But bottom line, wholesale slaughter on the part of uh, Japan over Korea. So that's the worst thing, and it's never to be forgotten. Okay. Then 300 years later, now 300 years is a long time. Very long. When they come back. Mm. Is it getting bad for you? That helps. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> 300 years they come back. This time the Japanese are more clever. They don't invade. They don't land a bunch of troops. Uh -huh. They create an incident, come on Kongwa Island, demand reparation for the incident for the sinking of the ship, firing on the ship. Yeah. And then they demand that Korea pay attention to them and open their ports. They basically did to Korea what Commodore Perry did to them, okay. the Japanese. They open them up for trade. But little by little by little, Japanese get stronger and stronger. And Japan in, internally is fighting a, a political war amongst themselves, saying, uh, do we take over Japan, do we take over Korea or not? The peaceniks said, no, leave them alone. The warlords said, yeah, let's take over Korea. Well, eventually the warlords won. Mm -hmm. But again, they start out very subtle. Not like in 1592 where they just come in and invade, boom. But here, little by little, politically, they foster changes, ask the Koreans to modernize this, modernize that, and a bunch of Koreans go along with it. Lee Kuan Yong is the greatest trader in Korean history because he's the guy that signs the document giving Korea to Japan. Yeah. But then Japan gets greedy and once again sets aside on China. They're going to move in China. 1931, yeah. war in Manchuria. 1937 war in China. Mm -hmm. Now Koreans are caught, and in the middle of this awful war. Yeah, and things go bad in the yeah. war. Mm. I'm dying. Yeah. Yeah. This is a war. I <laughs> this is this is war too. Yeah. I don't know how you're gonna be able to talk about. It. I can't even really listen properly. <laughs> so when the war ends, the Japanese are driven out. There's no love lost with the Japanese. Yeah. Then Park Chung Hee signs a normalization treaty in 1965. Uh -huh. Big demonstrations against Park Chung Hee for doing that. But he needed to. Are you finished? Mm. Oh, no way. I just forget the faster I eat it. The faster <laughs> I eat it. So, demonstrations. Demonstration against Pac. Yeah. But Pac needed the money, and Japan was willing to invest in Korea. Mm -hmm. Korea is a great investment opportunity. Because mm -hmm. they were so dang poor. Yeah. Korea is nothing at this point. Yeah. Per, per capita income is $100 per person per year. <coughs> $125 per person per year. Poor. Absolutely poor. That's the first time I went to Korea was in 1965. Mm -hmm. And that was the year that Pac normalized relations with okay. Japan. Oh boy, this is hot. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm dying. You're doing all the hard work. You're doing the talking. Mm. I'm just agreeing. Yeah, I only have half of it. So, whatever you say about Japan today, all of that underlies it. One more mouthful. Yeah. So that's where it all comes from. Yeah. Oh, let's get the saltine crackers out. <laughs> On top of that, you got the comfort women issue. Never that's a totally huge, yeah, I mean that's that's a huge deal. Oh, About to pass out. <laughs> yeah, I don't need any more. <laughs> you finished your spiel and you successfully ate the whole time. Wow, that's hot. Yeah. Okay, I'll quit. Yeah, quit. <sighs> <laughs> Your eyes are wide. Oh yeah. Your eyes are really wide. My face is getting red. My lips are burning. Um, Fire noodles. This helps. It does help actually. It's just kind of hard to eat when you're when, when you're on fire. Yeah. <laughs> really, a big issue I have with with Japan's approach to comfort women is that. And, and, and any number of things that Japan did during their occupation of Korea is that they always want to be done with it. 
Right. They always yeah. want to be like, all right, this resolves everything yeah. completely. Right? Yeah, we're done. Yeah. And that doesn't work, no. right? You can't, you can't fix that. You can't resolve it completely. That's right. And you can't, you can't change what you've done, right? And it may not, the people alive today may not have been the people who've done it, but it's the same government. Yeah. And the they, chance of it happening again, because we got 1592, yeah. and we got 1910. Yeah. How do we know we can ever trust them again? Right, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's my biggest thing is that I don't think you can be like, oh, we're going to make this donation or, you know, whatever, yeah. and then we'll fully and completely be done. No, that doesn't work. You you apologize for it, and you do make, you know, you, you do what you can to, yeah. not really to make up for it, but you do what you can to to support those people who suffered from it. But you don't say we're, we're done with it. Anymore. And you never deny that you did it. You, yeah, you did it. exactly, exactly. Japan's their own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I had a group of uh, scholars in Korea on a field trip. Two of them were Japanese experts. Mm -hmm. They were walking along the beach by the Sujun Wang and the tomb in the water. Mm -hmm. Muyo Wang. They're saying, when are the Koreans going to get over it? You know, we paid reparations enough already. Yeah. And so they're both agreeing that Koreans are a little bit too sensitive. Mm -hmm. Within six months, a new prime minister by the name of Aso, he goes out and says, well, a lot of these comfort women were prostitutes to begin with. <laughs> what is the definition of pouring salt in the wound? Yeah, yeah. There it is. So sometimes Japan's its own worst enemy on, on this yeah. by, by not standing up. And Stand up, own, own your mistakes. Own your mistakes. Under, understand that you did something absolutely terrible that cannot be fixed. Yeah. And then when you've paid a little bit of money, don't say like, okay, we're done. Right, that's the problem. Yeah. And so the little girl statue sits out in front of the Japanese embassy. Yep. Yeah. They've torn the embassy down, they're rebuilding it. Really? Uh, and the little girl statue is replicated in Glendale, California, or yeah. somewhere in New Jersey and uh -huh. other places around. So, the, you know, the, the, the thing lives on. It was such a horrendous thing. Yeah, important to remember things like that because that's how you avoid them happening again. Yeah. Is that we remember that these were the mistakes that were made and this is why they were made. Yeah. Therefore, we will not do them again. Trying to sweep it under the rug is not only offensive to Korea, but it's offensive to everybody who who could suffer from yeah. you know, sexual slavery. Yeah, that's well, it over that's, hot noodles. That's it over hot noodles. I uh, you come back down. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling okay. Now. You feel, <laughs> I come back. Okay. Down. I think I the saltines were a great idea. So thank you. Yeah, I think we needed something bland. We need something bland to, <laughs> to take away the hit. I hope so. They do. <laughs> well, I'm I'm not half the man you are. Look at that. Well, you did all the talking. That's what I'm saying. You did all the work. I'm sitting over here, you know, crying my eyes out. You know, just trying to pay attention. You're the one that has to focus. So I think I think uh, you had the harder job than me. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck to Korea and yeah. Japan. Let's hope this issue gets solved and both yeah. go on in yeah. a reasonable way. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, this is a new style of video. I, I hope it was fun for you guys. I, I think it was fun. I think it was a, it's just a way to put an interesting spin on... I took the challenge. Yeah, you took the challenge. You succeeded. I mean, I know a lot more about uh, Korea's relations with Japan now, and I think you covered a lot of the things that I was missing and, and what I know. Good. Dr. Peterson, as we have mentioned before, he has started a YouTube channel. The Frog Outside the Well. That's right. And so he's uploading pretty frequently, yep. and videos are going great. I have yep. a video coming up. Yeah. Uh, we'll see which of our videos comes out first. Yeah. Go check it out and uh, drop him a subscribe and see what you think. See ya on the on the YouTube. Okay, thanks guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Woo! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was that hotter than you expected? Yeah, not at first. I forgot how hot it was. Do people eat these? They claim they do. So there's bulldog bulgogun, and then this is hecht bulldog bulgogun. It's like nuclear, right? Oh. And this is the, these are the <laughs> nuclear fire noodles, okay? <laughs> I know that there's people who eat the bulldog bulgogun just like the regular level. Really? But I don't know if there's people who eat the nuclear. It just seems crazy. You have to be crazy to do this. Probably. <laughs>